Hello friends, last time I have discussed about the construction of carbon dioxide laser. Today I will discuss about the working of a carbon dioxide laser. Pumping Electrical pumping is used in carbon dioxide laser. Pumping of nitrogen molecules When electric discharge is passed through the gas mixture of CO2, nitrogen and helium, mix in ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3, Electrons are accelerated down the discharge tube in which mixture is placed. These accelerated electrons collide with nitrogen molecules and excite them to the higher energy level, say F2. Achievement of population inversion of nitrogen molecules. Some of the excited states of nitrogen molecules correspond approximately to the same energy of the excited levels E5 of CO2. Thus, when nitrogen molecules in levels F2 collide with carbon dioxide molecules in the ground state E1, remember that the nitrogen molecules, they are in the excited state, they are having more energy, but CO2 molecules, they are having the ground state energy. So when the excited state, when the excited nitrogen will collide with the carbon dioxide molecules in the ground state E1, then energy exchange takes place and this results in the excitation of carbon dioxide molecules to the level E5 and de-excitation of nitrogen atoms to the ground level F1. Therefore, the electric discharge to the gas mixture continuously populates the carbon dioxide to excited level E5. Please remember here that both the F2 and E5 both are metastable states. This helps to create a state of population inversion between the levels E5 and lower energy level E4 and E3. I have already discussed about the population inversion in my earlier video lectures. Thus the E5 is the upper laser level, E3 and E4 are lower laser levels. Therefore the purpose of nitrogen molecules is to help in achieving a population inversion in the carbon dioxide molecules. This is the main purpose of nitrogen molecules to excite the carbon dioxide molecule because the electrical pumping that is a collision of fast moving electrons with the CO2 will not excite the CO2 to the upper levels. So this is the indirect method to excite the carbon dioxide molecules to the upper level. Achievement of laser. The following transitions will occur. First one is E5 to E4 with laser wavelength of 10.5 6 micrometer. Second one is E5 to E3 with a laser wavelength of 9.6 micrometer. Thus these transitions produce lasers of wavelength 10.6 micrometer and 9.6 micrometer which lie in the far infrared region. Mirrors of the optical resonator systems are so designed to reflect the photons of these wavelengths and the photons will move back and forth in an optical resonator system. Please refer my earlier video lectures to study about the optical resonator systems. So the system of two mirrors in which these excited carbon dioxide molecules will move. Thus, uh, that, is a, that is the photons will move within these two mirrors. Thus lasers of wavelength 10.6 micrometer and 9.6 micrometer emerges through the partially reflected mirror. To understand this thing you must have to see my earlier video lecture about the optical resonator system. Okay, this is the system to produce photons of equal wavelength that is a, that is a produce a laser beam. Why helium is doped in carbon dioxide laser? The CO2 molecules in the states E4 and E3 de-excite to the state E2 through inelastic collisions with unexcited CO2 molecules. 
this process is very fast so there will be accumulation of carbon dioxide in this level and they can break the population inversion upper levels because there is probability of excitation of molecules from E2 to E3 or E4 but we want the transition from E5 or E4 to the downward direction and because there may be probability uh, for upward direction movement to stop the accumulation of CO2 molecules in E2 special additives like helium and water vapors are added into the gas mixture CO2 molecules return to the ground state E1 through collisions through collisions with the helium to which it transfers the excitation energy other function of helium is to conduct the heat away to the walls keeping CO2 cold this is because helium has high thermal conductivity output E5 to E4 with laser wavelength of 10.6 micrometer E5 to E3 with laser wavelength of 9.6 micrometer thus these transitions produce lasers of wavelength 10.6 micrometer and 9.6 micrometer which lie in the far infrared region output of 10 kilowatt is achieved with transition of 10.6 micrometer and it is in the continuous wave mode like in the helium neon laser efficiency of co2 laser is approximately 30 percent the co2 laser is more efficient than other gas laser because in co2 laser the levels taking part in laser transitions are the vibrational rotational levels of the lowest electronic level and as these levels are very close to the ground level this is a large part of the input energy is converted into output laser energy the co2 laser is more efficient than other gas laser like in helium neon laser we are using the electronic levels but in co2 molecules there are vibration rotation energy levels which are very near to each other applications of co2 laser CO2 laser have wide applications in industry for welding, cutting and for hole drilling. High energy CO2 lasers are used to destroy cancer tissues. For further reference, please search our website venusize.com. Please subscribe and like our channel. If you want laser ebook, please email venusize at gmail.com. Thank you. Thanks a lot.